The Data Nerd, Episode 6, Harnessing Data Soft Skills for Introverts. I'm an introvert. Uh, you're an introvert too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about soft skills in communication? When I worked in the data industry, I saw so many colleagues like myself that were introverted. They had phenomenal technical skill, but something held their careers back, and that was communication. Welcome to the Data Nerd Podcast. I'm your host, Nassar Ahmed. Join me as we explore the inner data nerd inside all of us. Dive into the world of data alongside special guests who not only share their wealth of experience and knowledge, but also unveil what truly makes them data nerds. This podcast is brought to you by Business Intelligence. That's B-I-Z-N-I-S Intelligence. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Business Intelligence to stay up to date with Tableau Training and the Data Nerd Podcast. Connect with me on LinkedIn or stream the Data Nerd Podcast across all major podcast platforms. Hey everyone, welcome to the Data Nerd Podcast. Today I have the pleasure of welcoming Chris Chin. Christopher Chin transforms data professionals into star speakers. He previously worked in the data industry in the fields of data journalism, data science, data visualization, and business intelligence, always seeking to tell the story within organizational data to maximize business impact. He realized that while technical training is frequently abundant, soft skills training is too often overlooked despite being a critical part of the value chain. For that reason, he launched The Hidden Speaker to offer specialized data communication training and equip developers, analysts, managers, and executives with the tools and confidence to give inspirational presentations. So welcome, Chris, to the Data Nerd Podcast. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. No, it's a pleasure to have you on. And, you know, really this topic and what we're going to talk about is, um, you know, pre introverts, really, like presenting or harnessing data soft skills for introverts. And I think this is a topic that uh, I can relate to as well. And I'd love to talk about this. But before we get into that, um, I'd like to ask all my guests a, a question um, in relation to being a data nerd, right? So, you know, this is the data, the data nerd podcast. And I like to ask my guests if you are a data nerd. And if so, tell me your story when you realized you are one. I am definitely certifiably a data nerd. And the reason I know that is there was a time I lived in the most beautiful city in the United States, in my opinion, San Francisco, mm -hmm. which has gorgeous weather year round. I knew I was a data nerd when I would rather be in my room studying data than outside enjoying the beautiful weather. So my, my first entry into the world was mm -hmm. through a unique lens. It was through the lens of artificial intelligence, actually deep learning and data science. I stumbled upon Andrew Ng, who's one of the pioneers in that space. He had a free course online. I binge watched all his content. And what made his content so special was the fact that he could explain complex concepts in an easy to understand way. He was a great teacher. I never met him in my life, but I just watched his virtual content through that course and it got me hooked on this amazing world of data. I watched everything from statistics to math to deep learning and it was especially interesting that I was motivated to do that because before that, my background was in music composition. So the fact he got me interested in this technical stuff was amazing. And I eventually got my first jobs within data because I did that self-studying and self-learning through the help of his content. So if Andrew Ng ever hears this, thank you for being an inspiration to me. And I think teachers don't often know the impact they have on their students. For me, he didn't only just raise the level of my knowledge, but he also inspired me to have this passion of continuous learning. So that's the greatest gift I think teachers yeah. can give. That's great. That's a great story. Uh, but when you were in San Francisco, did you still get to explore the city and not just stay in your room the whole time? Yes, ab absolutely. Absolutely. I would <laughs> stay there my whole life if I could, because the weather is just so perfect. We both live on the East Coast. We know summers can be brutal. Yeah. Over there, it's like 60, 70 degrees during the summertime. Yeah, it's, I hear it's beautiful. It's on my bucket list, actually. I've never been to San Francisco. Uh, but now you're out on the East Coast, right? You're in mm -hmm. the Washington or DC? That's area. right, DC. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right, so let's get, so here. here's a story, right? Introverts. I'm an introvert. 
Um, uh, you're an introvert too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Why are we talking about soft skills and communications? And why do we have podcasts? So why are we, why are you training people how to communicate? If we're introverts, um, we work in data. Um, if we have the technical skills and we're good at what we do, um, is it really necessary to have that so the soft skills or the communication skills? And talk about it from the perspective of being an introvert and how introverts can harness some of their communication skills to be more effective at their job in, in data analytics. When I worked in the data industry, I saw so many colleagues like myself that were introverted. They had phenomenal technical skill, but something held their careers back and that was communication. I knew one data engineer who I incredibly respected because any problem I had, he could easily solve. Best professional on the team. But when it came time to present the results of his work to our manager, that was where he experienced a lot more challenges. He didn't know how to present, to tell a story, to speak with confidence. And because of that, our manager didn't understand what it was exactly that he was doing and what he accomplished. And as a result, I believe it is because of those communication skills or lack thereof that he was eventually moved to another team because his value wasn't recognized. I knew another person who wasn't promoted for 15 years because they couldn't speak with confidence. And that was the gateway to managerial positions. I decided to make it my mission to close that gap for professionals like us in the industry because I think it's such a shame for people to have such great ideas and abilities to share, but unable to have that be recognized by their peers and managers. Communication is the path to let that happen. And I believe every single person, regardless of personality, can be a great speaker if they put in the work and dedication to make that happen. So you talk about it from the perspective of career growth or getting into managerial role or leadership. What if you're somebody who doesn't want that and you, all you want to do is just sit at your desk and crunch numbers and, you know, do your analysis? Is it is it still important that you have those the the soft skills? Absolutely. I entered the field thinking mm-hmm. that I could just sit behind desk all day, crunching numbers and creating pretty dashboards. Yeah. But the reality was my manager told me up front, probably the first day of the job, he said, this job is not one where you can just coast and hide behind the desk. It's one where you have to be visible, talk to stakeholders. You have to interact with them. Business is not a technology-driven business. It's a people-driven business. Mm -hmm. Everything runs on relationships. Mm -hmm. So unless you can form that, unless you can communicate with people so you can gain buy-in from them, you're not going to be successful at your job, regardless of whether you want to be in a managerial position. Yeah, so I guess guess part of the role of a data analyst, right, is to communicate business insights to the stakeholders or to the business. It's not just doing the analysis and saying, oh, here it is, you know, interpret it. And so that that communication piece, I feel, is lacking with a lot of people in the industry. Uh, people are very good technically, uh, but I find that they don't pay too much attention on that on the soft skills or the communication. And I and I th- think and you and I are both both come from this background where we were in, we are introverts and we still are just to some extent, right? Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that we cannot communicate effectively. And I think introverts can utilize certain skills that we have that maybe extroverts do not have to effectively communicate. So can you talk about you know how introverts can effectively communicate compared to extroverts who may be more comfortable in that space? I think the unique advantage introverts have is our tendency to scrutinize everything that we say. That can be a blessing and a curse. The curse part is we won't say anything, but the blessing is when we do speak, it can be meaningful. As an example, I worked in an organization. One colleague was very extroverted spoke all the time during meetings. Everybody knew his voice. Everybody respected his opinion. For me, it was hard to break in and and let my voice be heard during conversations because he would talk very often. But I said to myself, I can still be effective. I might not be like him, but I can be effective in my own way. So I made it a point to say at least one thing during every meeting, and I made it a point 
that what I said, I wanted it to be really meaningful in just as few words as possible. So when I started to do that in every meeting, people started to notice. I remember there was one project we were working on. He, was, My colleague, who was very extroverted, was talking about all his thoughts for the project, the direction we should go. And I said one thing. I said, have you considered this gap? Everybody started started to pay attention to that. It changed the direction of the project completely just because of one thing I said. That probably took one minute in that whole 30-minute meeting. So I believe introverts have the advantage of thinking very carefully about their words, and they can use that to their advantage if they choose their words carefully and say something impactful during every opportunity they can. And that resonates with me because I think as an introvert, growing up in school, I never spoke up. I feared talking and I hated public speaking. And I think part of that is to your point where we think too much and before we talk, which is not always a bad thing. I think it's good to 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 have some th- think about what you're saying before you you talk. It's better to do that than to speak without thinking, right? But sometimes it holds you back and then you don't talk and you're not heard. Right. And so I went through a lot of the throughout school, throughout high school, most of college, the beginning of my career in data analytics, not speaking up. And I think I had a fear of what other people thought of what I would say. But I think if we harness some of our knowledge and some of our skills, and because we still think before we talk, I think that fear is not something we should worry about, right? I, I mean, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what, how do we overcome f- that fear as introverts to kind of get out of our shell and start speaking up? Absolutely. I was just having this conversation the other day in my online class that I hold live sessions for. The question was, how can we become more confident in our speaking, especially if we're more on the quiet side? And there was great discussion. What we came up with was there are two elements when it comes to confidence. One is confidence in yourself and what you know. If you know your material, if you know everything about the project you worked on, when you're asked to present about it, there's no reason you should feel unconfident because you can answer pretty much any question that comes your way. You can talk confidently about it off the top of your head. For the, let's say, 1% of questions you don't know, that's okay. Nobody knows everything. We can say we don't know and then follow up with the person and give them an answer. The other part of confidence is our audience, understanding their needs. If we do our research, as introverted people, we like to make sure that what we say is meaningful. If we do our research on our audience, understand what they need, hit all the boxes during our presentation or communication, there's also no reason we should be unconfident because we did everything that our audience requires. So there's the component of the self and this component of the audience. If we master both, can go in knowing we're going to do an excellent job and there's no reason we should worry about other people's thoughts and opinions that we can't control. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, I think the key part there is knowing your stuff, right? If you're confident mm-hmm. in your knowledge and what then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to speak up. Um so I guess as introverts, regardless of whether we want to talk or not, we still need to know our stuff, right? You can't, mm-hmm. you can't be an introvert and not know what you're talking about and then, and then talk. And that, that's, I think that's where you kind of put yourself in a hole. Uh, but when we talk about communication, right? So we're talking a lot about on the verbal side of things, right? Verbally. Mm-hmm. Um, what about other forms of communication? Uh, written, uh, body language is that also is that also something we need to need to pay attention to absolutely talking about a something that we both enjoy data visualization that's another area where good communication is essential you were mentioning before how the advantage introverts possess is our ability to speak meaningfully and not have there be a lot of noise just talking off the top of our head but what we say we have to signal very clear and data visualization should be the same way rather than cluttering them with a bunch of color and visual elements everywhere, by reducing them to just what we want the audience to know, get to the point, have a clear takeaway title at the top, have one important color, let's say, in the visual, and then everything else is gray, so that stands out. 
making sure we have callouts or annotations to guide people through the story of the visual, making sure there's not noise with grid lines and axes. All of these elements visually are the same when applied verbally. It's all about bringing the signal out from the noise and making every choice purposeful. Yeah, I mean, we we learned that technically speaking, and you know, you talk about building dashboards or data visualization, right? And I, I a lot of those best practices can apply to communication because uh, visualization is a form of communication as well, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if I if I develop something um, for well, a stakeholder to for insights, okay, data visualization dashboard. Um, so I'm com one form of com communication is the actual dashboard itself, but to enhance that or add on to that, I think the soft skills will kind of um, help them see and understand it. Ultimately, the way you design the dashboard, you want it to be to speak for itself, but that's not always the case, right? Not everybody understands or has the same level of data literacy. Absolutely. I held a dashboard presentation workshop sometime last year. And one practice I recommend against is going into the dashboard presentation without any preparation. So this goes back to our discussion about it's so important to know your stuff. Mm -hmm. I sat in dashboard presentations before where the presenter was talking off the top of their head and trying to bring up examples in the dashboard interactively. They hadn't tested out before. Things didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Things went all over the place. It didn't go in the direction that they hoped because they hadn't done that preparation. So my recommendation for any for any presentation, dashboard or otherwise, is to prepare what you want to demo for your audience, the examples you want to go through. So let's say you're presenting on sales performance for your organization. Identify the filters you want to toggle, all the steps you need to take to walk people through that journey in the dashboard to understand your point. Make sure you have that prepared and everything is working. Make sure that when you present, you go through a structured formula instead of just talking off the top of your head. Organize those thoughts into, let's say, what is the goal stakeholders have for this dashboard? What are some issues that are preventing us from achieving those goals? And what actions can we take to resolve those issues? If you organize your thoughts in a structured way, people will more easily understand your point. So you're talking about communication, but I think what if you can apply the same principles um, in building a dashboard what do you do mm -hmm. before you build a dashboard you prepare the data if the data is not prepared properly um garbage in garbage out right yes and and and, and i think that's probably the most important step in any analytical project is the data preparation and i think the same can be said for communication you need to you need to be prepared and not just speak off the cuff um you know, obviously there may be questions where you may have to, but that all comes down to preparation as well and knowing your material. I agree. I was working with a client who was preparing for presenting to executives and she was very worried about what if I get a question I don't know the answer to? And I said to her, you can probably anticipate most of the questions that will come up during this presentation if you do the preparation ahead of time. So you can go through your slide deck and say, what would they ask on this slide? Most likely the question they'll ask is why? Why is this the case? Why is this happening? Or what should we do about it? So if you think about those two things for every single slide, you can anticipate most of the questions they'll ask you. You can also put yourself in the other person's shoes and say, what is their big priority? For executives, let's say, it's to make sure the company is profitable. So how can we achieve that for each of these points, for each of these slides? So I believe that it's possible to prepare for the majority of any communication situation if you spend that time up front. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about introverts. Okay. How, so as a data analyst, we know where to go to or where we could learn our technical skills. Now, there's online resources, there's boot camps, there's traditional training, whatever it may be. There's a lot of different outlets. Um, and you see posts on LinkedIn on people, you know, with training. I have I have training myself. I do Tableau training, right? I teach a class in data analytics. A lot of that is um, is very structured and there's a lot of resources out there. How about the communication uh, skills? How do we as introverts learn communication effectively? Uh, what's the best way to, to learn how to like, where do I start 
you know, we're talking about being good communicators, but like, I still, if I'm an introvert and I'm not comfortable doing that, I don't know where to start. I was very upset by the fact that that is the case. Mm. I could learn technical skills so easily on YouTube. Tons of playlists out there for learning Tableau. But very rarely is there a playlist or a channel specifically for data and tech folks to learn public speaking communication. That was the, exactly the gap that I hoped to fill. And the course I eventually developed as part of my hidden speaker program helps technical professionals by teaching them communication in the same structured logical way as they learn technical skills. So I believe that just like we move technical products from development to staging to production, we can do the same for our communication. We develop our mind, we stage our voice, we produce our story. So I move people through that sequential progression to understand all the pillars that make up communication in a structured way. Hmm. What I would recommend to anyone who wants to get started in the comfort of their own home and for free is to record themselves every day if they can. It's, it's a big ask because we don't like looking at ourselves on video. We don't like the sound of our own voice, but that is the most effective way to learn communication because we, when we watch ourselves back, we will hate what it looks like and what it sounds like, and we will improve upon it. And I recommend improving one small thing in each video every single day, just a short one minute video. And if you think about it, if you make 1% improvement every single day, think about how much that compounds over just a few weeks. And I think that's true, not just in communication, in all aspects of life. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I used to hate listening to my own voice uh, in the beginning. And um, now I'm comfortable with it. And I think part of that is l not just getting used to listening to myself, but maybe seeing some of those improvements or what I didn't like in what I heard the first time and improving on that made me more comfortable with it. Um, and then also makes me con more confident when I do have to speak up or when I do have to teach or whatever, you know, whenever I have to use my voice, um, it helps. It helps with confidence, right? Um, would you recommend recording yourself and then having someone else listen to it and provide feedback? Yes. That is always what I recommend. We have a different view of ourselves than others do. So it's mm -hmm. always great to get that more objective third-party feedback. It can help us see any blind spots in our communication. And we see this when we create a dashboard, for example. We think it's perfect. Yes. We think it makes intuitive sense to anybody. Yeah. But then we show it to a stakeholder and they have no idea how to navigate through it. So I always recommend get a second opinion whenever you can. Yeah, because once you're in the weeds, like in a dashboard and you're working through it, you may think it's great, but then you, you you kind of lose sight of sometimes the the end goal or who's using it. And then when they see it, they may not see it the same way, right? And I, so I guess the same thing is is true even in communication. Mm -hmm. um, getting that third party feedback is is important. Okay, so now so we talked about the communication from the aspect of you know, doing your role in analytics, right? Now, can introverts become leaders? Can they become managers? Um, how do introverts develop their leadership skills and confidently lead teams and projects? I believe that the model of leadership we're often given in media or the workplace is an extroverted model as the ideal model, which I don't think is necessarily correct in that every leader needs to be charismatic and and outgoing and social. I believe introverts and extroverts can both be excellent leaders. They both have pros and cons. There's not necessarily one best way to do things. Extroverted leaders, for example, are very good at having everybody rally around one idea that they propose. Introverts, on the other hand, because they much rather have the spotlight be put on other people, they can create more of this space for collaboration, new ideas to be heard. So for us as introverted people, we can seek leadership positions and use our traits to our advantage. So while extroverts might be able to push forward a certain idea very well and execute that efficiently, we can let people bring in their thoughts and then create that better space for innovation. So I believe every person can do that if they take the steps. What happened for me was I gradually took incremental steps similar to the way that I talked about communication, 1% improvement every day. For leadership, I would say to myself, I'll say one thing in every meeting. 
Eventually that evolved into, let me give a presentation during more important meetings. Eventually that evolved into, let me lead these meetings. Eventually that evolved into, let me take the lead in planning out this next project and planning out the work that other people would do on this project. So over time, just pushing myself out of my comfort zone, taking on these leadership responsibilities, let me get more comfortable to test the waters and eventually prove my competence in that new space. I think listening is a trait that introverts can use to become leaders, right? Leaders are, like you said, extroverts sometimes talk more than they listen. But as introverts, we tend to listen more than we talk. And I think that is something that we can leverage even in a leadership role, because in a leadership role, you want people to know that they're heard. And I think as introverts, a skill set that we can uh, use to our advantage is the ability to listen, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's so important to focus on listening because when we speak, we only say what we know. But when we listen, there's always the opportunity to learn something new from someone else. I think what happens often is we speak and then we listen just so that we can eventually respond to the other person. We don't open our mind. We have one agenda that we want from that particular conversation. And we'll say it regardless of what the other person says. But if instead we listen and truly listen to understand the other person, open our mind to the possibility we might be wrong, we might learn something new, that can advance our organizations in a much more effective direction. Yeah, no, I, I agree, completely agree with that. So right now it's a very competitive market, like for people who are looking to get into analytics or looking for a job. Um, I think we can stand out by showcasing some of the communication skills in the interview process or through networking, right? Can, can you talk about some, what we can do from a relationship building or applying for jobs or interviews to kind of leverage some of those soft skills and put us or distinguish ourselves some from other candidates. Simon Sinek, who is one of these great public speakers out there, his famous mantra is you start with why, you understand why you're doing something, why an organization is doing something, then you go to the other aspects. And he says introverts have one superpower, which is their listening ability, as we talked mm -hmm. about. But also when you speak publicly as an introvert, one thing we can do well is speak to one person at a time. For introverts, at least speaking for myself, I enjoy intimate one-on-one -on -one conversations much more than groups because it became, can become a little more overwhelming and overstimulating. Mm -hmm. So as an introvert, if you in every networking event or public speaking situation speak to just one person at a time, you can create a much more intimate environment where people feel connected to you and you can avoid that weakness that weakness that we have where we get, it becomes too much in those kinds of situations. So it's understanding what we're capable of. And then in those situations, pushing ourselves just a little outside our comfort zone each time. Yeah. I, the group settings always scare me even now, right? If, like when I go to networking events, I, I, I much prefer the one-on-one -on -one or maybe smaller groups than the group settings. Um, and that's something I, I need to like overcome even, even now, you know, I, I mean, I'm talking here on a podcast, I teach a class of 40, 50 students, but in person, I feel it's different, right? Is there a different dynamic in person versus remote in, in, or should we communicate differently or, or are there different best practices? There are so many differences in, in person versus virtual, for example, in in person, there are all the dimensions of communication that are visible. But virtually, as you can see here, I'm limited to this little box that I have to mm -hmm. emote to you. It's harder virtually to connect with people. In person, when I've given conference talks, it's such a different dynamic because the electricity literally goes to everybody in the room. Your passion and enthusiasm, everybody feels that. Yes. Virtually, everybody can turn off their cameras, leave the room, you never know. Every, there's a bit more distance there. Yeah. So virtually, it's even more important to be effective in communication so that you can engage your audience continuously. And sometimes I feel it's harder virtually because if you don't, in person, you get the feedback, even if they don't say anything, you buy the body language or you mm -hmm. see how people are listening to you, right? But virtually, you know, 
some pe- most people some people don't have the cameras on you can't even see them and if you don't get any questions it's hard to to kind of gauge their level of interest in what you're saying mm-hmm. uh, so there's definitely different aspects and it becomes becomes tricky um you know when you're comparing virtual versus in person um so let's you know this is great this is great i think there's a lot of great advice here that uh, people can ad- adopt and try to learn from you know I, I think a lot of people not just you and i um i think generally speaking for the most part a lot of people who are very technical are more on the introverted side and um and hopefully they can listen to this and kind of get some some insights and maybe help um with their own confidence when it comes to some of the soft skills so I appreciate you you coming on to the podcast to share all of your great insights. Um, how can people find you or connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. I have my website, which is thehiddenspeaker.com, and also my LinkedIn page where I post daily thoughts, ideas, inspiration for communication tips, actionable advice you can put into the workplace or your even your personal life every day. Awesome. Great. So be sure to connect with Chris. Um, reach out to him on LinkedIn as well? Yeah, LinkedIn is totally fine too. Perfect. I know you're pretty active on LinkedIn too. You, try you, to be. you take out, you, you have some good, good content out there. Thank you. So thank you, Chris, so much. Thank you for joining the Data Nerd Podcast. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity.